Well, that's a rotten bit of luck for Saab, then, isn't it? Like the old 900, it's very obviously a Saab. It's different, distinctive, and, it has to be said, from some angles, as ugly as a Velociraptor. And again, like the old model, it's built like a brick lavatory house. It feels like it was hewn from solid rather than assembled, and it's awash with safety features. Airbags, ABS, side impact bars, the lot. So the new 900 is safe, it's clean, and if you go for the turbo, it's very fast. You've got what looks like a conventional stick shift and you change gear exactly the same as you would in a manual, but there's no clutch pedal. And I like it. It means you have all the control that you want, or all the control that an enthusiast wants, but then in a traffic jam, your left leg is free to beat out a tune in time to the CD. I like this car. I like the fact that I'm a square peg and it's a square hole. I also like the fact there's space in the back for three adults, even if they're as grotesquely deformed as a BBC film crew. Would you please get out and stop fooling around? I also like the fact the boot is big enough for all their toys. However, for the money, £20,000 or thereabouts, this is not the car I'd buy. This, on the other hand, very probably is. It isn't as wild or as powerful as the turbo, but it's much, much smoother. And how do I know that? Because it's exactly the same engine they fit in Top Knox Vauxhall Cavaliers. Snobs will use that as an excuse to carry on buying BMWs, but the enlightened will not care two hoots. This may well have a Vauxhall heart, but it's still a proper Saab, and that will keep Saab enthusiasts happy. More than that, though, it's a very good car, less of a jet fighter, more of a kitten. And that will...